The Northward Trend of Barrel continues. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you in this video. We're going to talk about some of the modeling, the latest official forecast from the Hurricane Center, and then just how strong this thing could get heading back into what is looking like Texas. We've been talking about this northward trend for the last several days and appearing that it would make a turn to the north due to that weakness in the ridge that we showed you was going to happen last week. So we're going to get all into this first with starting that now tropical storm barrel. It has weakened into a tropical Tropical storm this of course expected because of the land interaction for one and now finally the shear beginning to work its way into the core of this system as well we're going to talk about all of that if you do want to stay updated on this system and for the rest of hurricane season and the weather in general hit that subscribe button for me post in the comments where you're tuning in from and we are going to get to it all right so one of the other reasons why barrel is weakening it's been dealing with some shear for the last few days it has been really breaking free from that shear and shoving it back off. It's really not been induced and really impacting the storm as much as what we would have thought it would. Otherwise, though, here is the deal. We have barrel hanging right about here, and we have this big upper trough that's hanging out off the east coast of Mexico, the southeast corner of Texas. This is also helping to inflict some southerly shear. Let me go back into the uh, satellite image and I'll show you. You can kind of see that right here. Notice how the clouds are moving up from south to north. That is all because of that dip in the jet stream or this little trough here, that upper low that's hanging out in the extreme southwesterly Gulf of Mexico. This eventually, as I put this into motion, is going to kind of retrograde back in eventually into eastern Mexico, and that shear is going to relax. So eventually, we are going to see barrels start strengthening again because of the relax relaxation of that wind shear and because, of course, of the extremely warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Here is the latest track again, and we're going to get another track, a uh, couple other tracks for the remainder of today, but that is reflected here, and I'm going to show you kind of the schematics of this system. We're going to get deep down into the core of the modeling of this system to show you what is actually going on with this thing and how it's eventually likely going to strengthen again on approach to likely Texas. So you see they're reflected likely to stay a tropical storm for most of the day tomorrow. Then on Sunday, potentially and likely regaining hurricane status again before it makes an eventual likely landfall somewhere along the Texas border here. Now, you'll notice the cone really widens out as we get to the early stages of next week. That does include parts of Louisiana. There are some models that do want to get it further into northeast Texas and to southwest Louisiana. I will say, though, at this point, the most likely area is somewhere around the Corpus Christi uh, maybe as far north at Houston, but really the Corpus Christi, Victoria, Rockport area, uh, at least from the current modeling and the current trends that we are going to break down through the course of this video. So just keep that in mind going forward. All right, some of the latest modeling here. These are the global models. We're going to get into some of the ensembles, but you see where they have been tightly packed into northeast Mexico. They're now finally catching on that barrel has been stronger than modeled and further north than modeled. Again, coming ashore right around uh, near Cozumel and then working its way into the northern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula and going to likely eject further north. So here again is the cluster of models. One of the more uh, reliable ones is going to be the TV con here, and that's going to be that brown color that's working right through Corpus Christi. So that has caught on with the significant shift to the northeast right around the Corpus Christi area through Rockport, Victoria. Uh, there's still some room for it to go further to the northeast depending upon where this thing eventually gets its act together. So there are some of the models. Now I want to switch to my other weather computer again and do kind of what we did in our previous video. I want to show you where this is in relation to the modeling. So here is the satellite. Of course, it does not look impressive at all. Thankfully, it is weakened to a tropical storm, as we talked about, as of 2.30, 3 o'clock Eastern time. Nonetheless, the core of it, or what's left of it, is still riding on the northern side of the European ensembles. Remember, the ensembles are different initial conditions kind of put in to get a wide range of outcomes rather than a point forecast, like some of the models that I just showed you. Then we create that ensemble mean. So it is still riding on the northeast side of those ensembles. So we're going to zoom things out. We'll take the satellite off. And notice where the northeast un or the, the further northern running ensemble members are, closer towards 
likely Victoria. There are even a few of these heading up towards Houston, but you see the cluster here of uh, ensemble members toward even northeast of Corpus, again, closer toward Victoria or Rockport. I want to point out another thing, too. We already know that the storm itself is taking the model runs, the ensemble runs, members that are further to the north. So we can basically throw out all of these. These are the weaker solutions, and it's helping to draw that black line, which is the ensemble mean, further south. So when you throw out those ensemble members, the mean is likely going to be somewhere right in here where you see my little magnifying glass bouncing around here, which would put it closer to Rockport and then really maybe even further than that. Uh, I don't want to say closer to Houston just yet, but Houston is no doubt in play. We are, of course, in that official forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center. So really everybody from southwest Louisiana to the Texas-Mexico border still need to be watching this, just knowing that the more likely scenario is somewhere between Corpus Christi and Houston that this comes ashore early next work week. So again, everybody should be taking the weekend here. I know it's an extended 4th of July holiday weekend, but everybody on the Texas coastline needs to be making sure that their preparations are in order. All right, so now we're going to get into some of the dynamics and meteorology of this system here. I wanted to get that critical information out first about the timeline, and I'll show you that cone again coming up in just one second after we kind of dissect all of the meteorology here to see how this storm will behave because I think it will tell the complete story with what we could be looking at by the time we get into Monday and Tuesday. So here's the deal. I think the H wharf is doing a very nice job. It's a little bit stronger than what it currently is. It has it at 982 at this time. It's really 986 in the millibar department. But notice it continues that weakening. Okay, so here's the first kind of thing that we see, that southwesterly shear induced by that trough that I showed you, and that's why I wanted to show you that trough. Look at some of the drier air coming in on the southern side. That trough is helping with that. It's also displacing, notice all the green here, that is the moisture. It's pushing all of the thunderstorm activity to the center's north, and it's also displacing the kind of tilt of this storm. We talk about a lot on this channel, I like to make food references, that hurricanes are like pancakes. You want your stack of flapjacks all kind of in one spot if they are tilting or leaning, kind of like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and they fall off your plate, that's no good, you can't eat the peak pancakes. Same kind of deal here, a hurricane wants to be vertically stacked and not disrupted. That's why these things do not like wind shear. Notice we have this little swirl up here in that counterclockwise motion but the surface low is down here that's the mid-level low that's the surface low so this thing is tilted that is why it is likely going to spend its saturday trying to pick itself up after the yucatan and after the shear has finally beat it down unfortunately modeling has it doing just that so there's later in the afternoon on saturday look at that we still have that circulation out here notice that counterclockwise flow and the wind barbs we still have the surface low uh displaced and then all of a sudden that mid-level center reaches down to the surface and kind of grabs it and then notice how we're getting a little bit better organized here the spin uh in the mid-levels which is the wind barbs here Gets a little bit closer to that area of low pressure, just right smack dab in there. And then notice the green is also starting to become a little more well-rounded again. That's a notification to us that the core is starting to be rebuilt. And then by Saturday afternoon, you see the pressure has dropped. And then once those centers are co-located again, then it can start to get the heat engine going and then start to strengthen. And we see that here. That's late Saturday evening. Now here we go on Sunday morning. That's about 4 a.m., 3 a.m. Central Time. And then you see the wind barbs get a little bigger. You see those lines, those isobars, lines of equal pressure get a little tighter. And then watch that number drop. So you see it going there, 978, 977. And we continue the strengthening, unfortunately, right on in. That would put it closer to Corpus Christi, to the Rockport area. Again, as a 968, that would be Cat 2, maybe getting up to Cat 3. So there's still some question as to how much strengthening this can go quickly. But it appears, anyway, that this thing is going to be strengthening into landfall, at least as a Category 1. But I think there's upper echelon potential here for a major hurricane coming in in on the southeast corner of Texas, anywhere from Corpus Christi, give or take, to Rockport, maybe even as far north as Houston, although Houston would appear to be the outlier at this point. I want to show you that again. This is the H wharf, uh, what I just showed you, um, with kind of the reflectivity. This is 
at early morning. So this is at about one o'clock in the morning, midnight on Monday morning. So early on the uh, 8th of July coming ashore with a landfall somewhere Monday morning. That would be at seven o'clock in the morning on Monday, just for some timeline sake. So again, everybody in the cone, which is in the entire coastline of Texas and parts of Louisiana need to be making their preparations. And I would just on err on the side of caution to make those preps for a stronger storm than is currently expected from the official forecast. Again, a lot is going to happen tomorrow where it's getting its act read together and then Sunday will be the day for it to strengthen. So there may not be a ton of time, but model guidance here showing that we will have a strengthening system. The HAFS B, that is another hurricane model from NOAA, um, has a 976 and then a 969 millibar low. So again, it does a lot of strengthening on Sunday. The Gulf waters are warm. We'll take a look at that in just one second. There are the winds again at uh, in knots, and you see the deep dark purple there in and around Corpus, in and around Rockport. And that is going to be, again, 64 knots. So that's going to be hurricane force winds, uh, no doubt, getting back in 70 to 80 miles an hour. And again, those are going to be um, those the wind speeds. So not sustained or not gust. Those are the sustained winds. So again, there's room for more intensification along the coast. But I just want to be clear um, what is going on here. I'm not trying to scare anybody or anything, just saying the potential and that's why i wanted to show you dynamically what was going on not just oh my gosh the models are saying this oh my gosh we had that trough there that's why it's weak it's over land right now but the wind shear backs off again and the waters are in the mid to upper 80s i'll show you that in a second a lot of people were commenting about the icon on yesterday's video so i do want to show it it has it ejecting off the yucatan um much much stronger than what it actually is so right now it's at a 985, 986. It's so it's doing okay there to eject, but then it has it stronger already tomorrow. Not sure that's the case with that wind shear there and with the drier air and with the core being eroded. The reason for that's and that is the sole reason why the icon is so far north, closer to Houston. So if you're following the icon, it is a pretty reliable model, but it is that far north, closer to Houston and the Texas Louisiana border, because it ejects off of the Yucatan stronger than modeled by most models and by what it actually is, and it strengthens much more quickly during the day tomorrow whereas most modeling is suggesting that it's going to take a day to get its act together because of that drier air because of that shear but nonetheless if we do start seeing it getting its act together much more quickly tomorrow and it has defied a lot of odds already then we would be looking at this to come closer to Houston and then closer to southwest Louisiana. So again, that is certainly something that is on the table, I think more likely a little a uh, little far south of Houston. But nonetheless, it is something we're watching. Tomorrow is going to be a huge day uh, in, when determining the history of uh, what remains of Hurricane Barrel. So again, there are the models. Again, we do have one model that is uh, closer to Houston. And again, likely accounting for that it is going to be much stronger quickly i do want to show you one last thing on our weather computer and that is going to be uh i want to show you the track one more time and then we're going to get into the water temperature so now you can kind of see why the forecast that's one of the things i like to do a lot on this channel is to show you why the forecast is the forecast and things like that so notice the hurricane center keeps it a tropical storm in a week one through the day tomorrow Likely, again, they're picking up, again, they're the experts uh, when it comes to hurricanes on that drier air coming in on the southern side, trying to get its core back together after the land interaction. And then also that trough inducing some of that southwesterly shear that's pushing all those thunderstorms up top. But then again, you see they are also encountering or encount accounting for the extremely warm water temperatures and that relaxing shear that I showed you as it approaches the Texas coastline. I know what everybody's thinking from Texas. The forecast was for a super weak storm when Harvey came ashore. That's always something that we fear when the water temperatures are this tight and we do have an improving upper level environment. May not be as strong 
as Harvey. I wouldn't, again, I would not write that off by any means. At least this one does look to be moving rather than sitting on top of us uh, like Harvey. There is a dip in the jet stream that would hopefully get this up and out quickly. Uh, there's no signs of it stalling at this time. But the water temperature in here, that darker orange right close to uh, the South Texas coast and the Mexico border, it's 85, 86, 87, 88 degrees. And you can see that up on the scale here, especially right where my mouse is. Uh, if it were to take that northerly turn and like the icon, uh, there's a big time pool of warmer air or warmer water, I should say, uh, just hanging out south of Houston. And that would obviously not be good news. Alrighty, guys, we're going to be watching this through the weekend. Everybody in Texas right now, whether you're in Brownsville to Corpus to Victoria to Houston, Galveston, right along the coast and then to extreme southwest Louisiana, maybe as far east of Lake Charles. Pay close attention to this. It would not hurt to make sure that everybody that's in the cone starts their preparations. Again, you may not need it at all. Not everybody in that cone is going to get the major impacts, but somebody unfortunately is, and it's better to be safe than sorry, especially when there's still a little bit of uncertainty. But it would appear now uh, the end game for this is likely going to be somewhere between Corpus, Rockport, Victoria, maybe up to Houston, and then again, an outlier on the northern side would be uh, the Texas-Louisiana border, including the Lake Charles area. We're watching closely, but again, now is the time and take the weekend to just get your ducks in a row, get prepared, and of course, continue watching the forecast and that official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Alrighty, guys, if you uh, have found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to stay updated, not only for the remainder of this storm, of course, Monday evening, we have Tropics Watch live. We are no doubt going to be talking about this because we will likely be having landfall somewhere uh, during the morning or early afternoon at the latest uh, when it comes to uh, barrel. So we're going to be talking a lot about that on Tropics Watch Live. So that'll be at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 7 Central. We got you covered there. And again, make sure you pay close attention to these forecasts. Hit that subscribe button if you are interested in more weather content and analysis. And we will catch you next time.